If your L1A case has been denied and you're thinking about filing an appeal or a motion to reopen, you're going to want to watch the success story video. Has your case been denied in a very unjust, unreasonable way? Please let us know in the comments down below. We'll love to dive into it with you. Hi everyone, this is Joseph Zhang. Today I want to share with you a super exciting administrative appeal office decision. It's an AAO L1A category success story. Um, these cases are far and few between because generally it's impractical to file these um, appeals, but when you do get the opportunity and you can really latch on, and you file and you win it, it feels so good. This is a February 2020 success story that we filed. These are the type of decisions where if you get enough of them, then it will become a precedent decision and it completely changes the world of law. First, let me give you a little background. So this is an L1A case. It's an executive or managerial transferee from a foreign country to the US. So our client, he is a CEO of a major lamp and shades company that creates lamp different types of lighting um, and creates them in China and he is going to come over to the US to build up his subsidiary. It's a very straightforward L1A. However, before he came to our office, he has already hired three different attorneys to file this case for him, all of them having been denied every single one. He started this three years ago. Each time the denial covers a different kind of a ground, but essentially all of them have one thing in common. The one thing is uh, your U.S. company doesn't have enough square footage for your U.S. business. The lease you entered is too small. Um, there's a whole bunch of other reasons why his case was denied in the past. So when he engaged us, we looked at everything like, okay, I see what they did. I see the denial. I think we could do it a lot better. Let us give us an opportunity. Let us take a shot at it. We filed it. It was denied. This time, though, the denial pretty much just focuses on that one thing. Your company's square footage is just too small only 100 square feet. The studio that I'm sitting at right now, it's approximately 100 square feet. How can this small of an office be an international executive um, company? This is his first L1. He hasn't even been in the US to start this business yet. In the past, this has worked. In fact, other clients, and we've seen other cases where the first business address was just at home or at a CPA office or a virtual office with no square footage at all because the whole idea is you file for this L1A visa category, you give a business plan, you show you have the intent to build an international company within a year, and then at the time of the extension, you prove, hey, I've done it, check this out. It doesn't make any sense to rent a 3,000 square foot office and a 10,000 square foot warehouse with 20 employees before the CEO even gets its visa to come to the US. It just doesn't make business sense. This is a startup, it's a brand new idea. Um, he wants to try it and, and in the past it's always worked. Just not for him. We thought this was extremely unfair and this denial has ran through the previous three denials. Now, I'm gonna pause a little bit and explain why it generally doesn't make any sense to do an appeal for these type of cases. Reason being, for an L1A executive transferee, um, it's permissible to file for premium processing. You pay a little bit more, you file it in, and within two weeks, you get an answer. So if your case was denied, any reasonable person would just say, okay, let's improve it and file again with a little bit more fee, and hopefully, fingers crossed, in two weeks, it'll get approved, and then within a month, you get to be here. If you file an appeal, it's a nine month wait, there's so much uncertainty, um, you know, it's not worth it, right? So most of the time, for most cases, it doesn't work. In this case, however, this worked because no matter how many times he files, USCIS is always going to deny his case because the square footage was just too small. Unless he really expands his office and does rent out a huge office space, which doesn't really make any sense. and frankly, at this point, he's kind of given up, right? It's already been three years 
four years. His entire business plan has been completely ruined. He's had to re rewrite his business plan every single year, talking about what he's going to do in the U.S. if his visa is granted. You know, you could see how fed up he is with this whole situation. Not to mention all the canceled orders, all the customer service that he had to do was all kind of in vain. Um, he had to hire other people to take care of it. I mean, think about your plan getting postponed for three years, four years for an outrageous reason, and then now being told. Hey, you know what? If you just invest a little bit more, get a bigger office, maybe your case getting approved. He's not buying it, so he was in the perfect position to file an appeal. If you file with the same type of case, no matter how much you do, it's not gonna work. He's already lost three years, so losing another six months, nine months wouldn't really matter that much to him. And at this point, this is his last shot. He was gonna give up if this doesn't work. So. We went to work, prepared a very detailed L1A motion to reopen first, and then an administrative appeal office、um, appeal right after. We filed it, and nine months later, the case was approved. Huge, huge success! You could totally look that up on your own. February twenty twenty,、um, the AO judge wrote a scathing review of USCIS. We were just kind of focused on that one point, but they kind of point out all the other decisions that they made was incorrect, in error. So they completely reversed it. After that decision came into office, USCIS followed with an approval. So this entire three years of denials has now been justified for the client. The way we did it. I mean, as I'm explaining to you, you you're probably seeing okay that that kind of makes sense. It's outrageous why somebody would be required to have a super big lease. Yes, having a 100 square foot le lease might look really small, but you got to convince me more, right? So, in the case of USCIS, we provided over a thousand pages of documentation to show how big. The company is worldwide. How many subsidiaries it has? How it makes pretty much all the lamps and shades in the world. How major U.S. companies are using them as the key supplier. So yes, their initial office is small, but there's so little doubt that once he comes in, he is going to expand it. And you know what? If he doesn't expand it, big deal. In a year from now, he just Gets denied for his extension in the motion to reopen and in the AO appeal, which provided layers and layers and layers of argumentation.、Um, I think the brief was about fifty to seventy-five pages of just continuously showing. Sure, the office space is a factor. It's a small, small factor. Look at how big the China operation is. How many people they employ. How many subsidiaries they have. All over the world, look at the revenue, worldwide gross income. Look at how they were published. Look at how many customers they have in the U.S. They are for sure going to expand. They are for sure going to make America great. They are for sure going to be an international company that bring in tons of revenue and tax dollars and employment. It isn't that different than what we originally submitted in the first initial L1, but we just angled it all to focus on this one reason for the denial. Just think of it like. It, when you get bad customer service or something, and you just want to argue like this is clearly not right, this is what we did with USCIS and the AO Appeals Office. They are a separate branch from USCIS. When USCIS issues a decision, they are using the general laws and principles provided by the Congress and using their own judgment to adjudicate a case. The law is. You're supposed to come here and establish a company. So I look at your documents to see if it's legitimate. But because of the hundred square foot office, I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. I make my decision, and these officers have continuously done that. Well, we're essentially saying that is wrong. You could take it into account, but you neglected in taking other more important things into account. So you make you made an error in judgment. So you abused your right as an officer, and we are asking a separate government entity, of the AO Administrative Office, to review your work and you review your decision and to see if you did it correctly. In this case, it was proven that they did not adjudicate correctly. So the case was sent back. Then they re-adjudicated it and approved it. It's super rare to get L1A AO decisions approved. Generally, it's just so rare to get one of these L1A AO decisions approved. But it's amazing when the right facts and the right situation happens, and when you can make a good case. So that's the L1A AO decision we want to bring to you guys today. We're super happy to be a part of history. 
If you guys have any questions about this case or about your own case, you guys got a request for evidence, you guys got a notice of intent to deny. If you guys got a denial and you're thinking about doing a motion to reopen or an appeal, feel free to give us a shout out. We'd we'll love to talk to you about your case. The L1A is a super interesting area of law. We're bringing executives and managers from international companies to the US to start their operation or to continue their operation um, for a short period of time. And if people wanna stay longer, then they get a green card through the EB1C process. And every business is different. If you're selling planes, if you're buying real estate, or if you're starting a law firm, it's all different. And how do you prove each case is all unique? And sometimes these adjudicators, they make wrong decisions or they ask for different things because, frankly, they're not experts in your field and you just need to explain it to them so that they understand, oh, for sure you are an executive. For sure you are a manager at an international company. We'll grant you the visa. Thank you for watching the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or directly email and contact us. Be happy to engage. If you like content like this where we kind of go in depth and really analyze how to do a particular case, feel free to subscribe and give us a like. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.